Good afternoon and a warm welcome to all participants who joined us today for this session, Pathway for Future Careers. My name is Domi Johnson and I'm the National Education Officer of CISA. CISA is a national peak representative body representing 700,000 international students across Australia. We are working by international students for all international students in Australia for their rights and betterment in Australia. I would, I would like to acknowledge our session sponsor, Pearson PTE, and I'm so grateful and thankful for this generous support that by sponsoring our session. So let's watch a quick video from Pearson now. That's not my home. That's not my sister. Not my parents. That's not where I learn English. That's not where I work hard. That's not where I dream of becoming a doctor. That's not the color of my skin. That's not my wallet. That's not my gender. That's not where I fell in love with science, with big bold ideas. This isn't where I dreamt about living in Australia. In America. In the UK. Those are not my friends. That is not my bag. Today, I am none of those things. I am only what I want to be. Once again, many thanks to Pierce and PT for generously supporting and sponsoring us. Okay, this session will support all international students to find a meaningful employment after post-study. This session will also give you all insights on how international students can develop a unique and also a positive experience for their employment and in their workplace. We, the Council of International Students Australia, understands the concern of all international students around employability, especially during this COVID. And today, we are here with our amazing speakers to give us insights and guide you all to the how to best navigate yourself to the right job market. I'm humbled to have a fantastic speakers here with me today. So I'm gonna introduce all my speakers. Our first speaker, Brendan. Brendan is an international education professional with more than 20 years of experience in higher education. Brendan has extensive knowledge of managerial experience in areas of international and domestic recruitment and marketing. Admissions, International Development Partnership and Administration. Brendan is a current director of international service in Faculty of Business, Economics and Law at the University of Queensland and has strong passion for supporting international education and international students as well as developing strategies to ensure best practice in the students' experience. Welcome, Brendan. Thank you, Domi. Hello. And our second speaker, Bulis, is a co-founder and a co-CEO of Factura, an experimental learning edtech company which helps learners build a real-world skills for jobs of tomorrow. Factura has powered programs linking more than 70% of Australian universities and tens of thousands of students with government business and community organizations. Factura has a, uh, have an awesome diverse team of 40 staff in eight countries. Prior to Factura, Mr. Lee was head of strategy, innovation and international for CSIRO, Australia's national R&D agency and a co-founder CSIRO deep tech startup program, CSIRO ON. Mr. Lee was formerly a director with Deloitte Consulting, co-founded two other technology startups and worked in a program development for an Australian university, holds a bachelor degree of law, masters of marketing and is a member of AICD. Welcome, Bruce Lee. 
Thanks, Tommy. Good to be here. Yeah. And I would like to warmly welcome our third speaker, Mr. Dinkar. Dinkar is a founder of Student Job Australia, the employability platform for international students and graduates. Previously, he was an international student himself. Currently, he works as a lecturer and teaches international students. He also serves as a president of at Toastmaster International, a not-for-profit training organization that focuses on the communication and leadership development. Welcome, Dinkar. Thanks, Tommy. Okay. I'm excited to start this session, the pathway for future careers. I know there's a lot of um, concerns around your employability for international students, especially after they graduate. So we are here to answer some of your questions restricting to the time. So we will be able to give you an insights on how you can best navigate yourself in searching for your future career. So I would like to start with Brendan. Brendan, do you think um, university results would help international students with finding a job after their graduations? If so, how and all, what all ways they can navigate in? So. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. That's a, that's a great question. And uh, hello, everyone, from uh, where I am here in the University of Queensland in Turrbal and Jagera country uh, in Mianjin or Brisbane. It's great to join you today and congratulations on 10 years of CESA. Uh, and thank you again for inviting me. Hello to Dinkar and Bo, my fellow panellists uh, and everyone watching. It's, it's uh, fantastic to engage with you. Now, yes, uh, I do think that uh, grades are important on some level, uh, but they're not the complete picture. If you take someone studying civil engineering, for instance, you're going to want to know that they've passed certain subjects because uh, that's going to mean the bridge stays up or the bridge falls down. Uh, so in that specific example, grades are important. But when you're painting a picture of yourself, uh, to a prospective employer, uh, it's also about what the subjects were, what your degree was, and uh, what extracurricular activities you've had. And a way that you can bring your grades into the conversation is uh, if you've um, had a, a very good assessment, for instance, maybe you're studying finance and you did a really good uh, assignment on deregulation of the banking industry and that's relevant to your specific uh, interview, you could talk about that in your interview and highlight that. Uh, but employers generally aren't looking through everyone's transcript, looking at every single subject and looking at the grades. They're looking at that complete picture. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. I would also like to emphasize that um, university results and um, graduation transcripts are not only important. We have to explore for options, build your leadership skills, um, stand unique and see how you can best fit. Knock the, um, knock the door of all the opportunities, see what best fits in you, go explore your options. Um, that's how we learn. We all learn from mistakes and we all build ourselves by making mistakes. So fail yourself, um, put yourself um, experimenting in a lot of opportunities. Then when you know where you are and what you wanted to become and how you want to build yourself. And thank you so much, Brendan, for answering that. Um, I would like to direct the next question to Mr. Lee. Uh, what are what are as factura is so diverse and i feel like um it has a very diverse culture i would also like to know what are the things they should keep in mind about the australian work workplace culture when they are applying for a job especially for the international students yeah thanks domi and thank you cesar and, and hello to everyone watching i'm really looking forward to engaging in the discussion today and and Hello to my fellow panelists as well. Um, thanks for the question. I'll start with just a little more context because um, it is a topic I'm really passionate about, employability for international students. Um, and it has been really important for the development and growth of, of our business over the past um, 10 years. Um, so Domi mentioned we've got about 40 staff in eight countries. 80% um, of those are culturally and linguistically diverse. I'm contributing exactly nothing to this. I only speak English, um, including um, more than 50% of whom were ex-international students. Um, so that's been a really important um, thing for our business um, and a really um, important part of our business culture in, in Practira as well. Um, in fact, we were fortunate enough to hire just 
uh, just today actually two former international students who are working with us um, previously. So it was, it was nice to do that, um, knowing I was coming onto this call today. Um, Australian workplace culture, um, you know, Australian firms operate within a global culture. And so I think um, I wouldn't draw two bright lines between, um, you know, uh, the average Australian workforce and the average international workforce, particularly as um, different international countries have such diverse experiences. But a, a few rules of thumb, I suppose, um, that I've observed watching um, international students come into our business and other businesses um, and seeing how they go. Um, I think it's always good to keep in mind that Australian workplaces are generally looking for initiative, um, are a little more informal, a little less hierarchical on average than, than um, some other places in the world. Um, Australian employers are generally flat. Managers are looking um, in terms of hierarchy. Gen um, managers are looking for younger employers to speak up, to put themselves forward, to show initiative. Um, and just a couple of examples of that. Um, someone who'll be known to a number of you at CESA, um, Ocean Chung, um, an international student from UQ actually, Brendan, <coughs> recently joined our business. Um, and what grabbed our attention about Ocean was that he'd shown a tremendous initiative, as, as some of you know, as a student. Um, he you know, had started a business called Startup Interns. He was actively working in the experiential learning space where we were. Um, he was extremely well networked. Um, everyone knew him. Um, and he'd really shown a, a great deal of initiative um, you know, in, in, in the ecosystem and was really open to collaboration, really um, uh, looking to build his network as well. Um, and that's incredibly important. Um, and he's carried that forward. He's, he's been with us uh, now seven months. Um, and that, that, that attitude is really carried forward into the workplace. So um, I think just remembering that um, where you do get the opportunity to connect with an Australian employer is putting yourself forward a little bit more than you may be comfortable, speaking up, showing initiative. Um, if you're on a business project um, with a client, really um, identifying the piece of work that you did, talking with passion to the piece of work that you were responsible for. Um, another lady who's been with us probably about two years now, Sharon Roy, um, known to, to many of you, um, I first encountered Sharon working, I was a mentor on a business project team. Um, and by the end of that business project, I just could not hire Sharon. She was so infectious. She was, uh, you know, always putting ideas forward in the team. Don't get me wrong. Um, but she was certainly clear about what she thought and what she'd been doing on the project. And after only three weeks of that project, I had a really good impression of who Sharon was and what Sharon had done. Um, and certainly, again, that's carried over into the workplace as well. So that's, that's I guess, a big tip. Um, Australian workplace culture, a little more informal. Um, and please don't be afraid to show initiative when you're in the workplace, even as a student. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And touching base on that, Sharon is my very close friend. I have <laughs> learned a lot of, lot of things from her and she is really passionate about. So um, from Mr. Um, Lee uh, comment, we all should learn that we shouldn't hinder telling that we are from a, I mean, from a different background. I can't adapt to my things or something like that. Explore, fit in yourself, have a diverse um, community as your friends group, mingle with everyone, learn different languages, which I could encourage you all. Um, and then put yourself forward to the workplace. Don't hinder yourself that you can't do it just because you're from a different background. Yes, we can all do it. Just experiment it, go forward, put yourself and see you can be the best fit as well as Lee mentioned. So yeah, explore yourself and the opportunities that are around. Um, so the third question I would like to direct to Dinkar. Um, Dinkar, I would like to ask, what are the things that an international student should keep in, keep in their mind about the Australian workplace culture when they apply for jobs, especially um, what are the criteria and the eligibilities that they wanted to um, you know, um, develop in themselves before they apply for jobs? And what do you think from your perspective? It's a great question, uh, Jomi. First of all, I want to thank you, CISA and Study New South Wales as well, because they, the team of Study New South Wales, I found government organization, they've been very um, helpful, supportive, you know, doing so many different activities. And, uh, and especially, uh, you know, I, I always as an international student, I came myself, my background uh, as an international student as well, but I found uh, you actually personally, Domi, you know, yourself, you're a very great example of international student. You're doing, participating in so many different activities, managing your time, 
and always willing to learn different things. You know, that's what I, I can see you as a great example here uh, as an international student. So coming back to the, the questions, what you asked me, uh, what are the Australian uh, who are, um, the, uh, industries are looking for, you know, for inter international students? Uh, you know, sometimes many international students, uh, they think, they think uh, uh, because, you know, I mean, employers are not hiring them because of the visa issues or because of they have limitation of 20 hours work, work right. But but I I I I was myself as an international student and I I I have a business I work as an employer as well I, I was in hiring some international student as well we we hire many employee employee so I found myself actually em, employers are not actually uh, you know concerned about like uh, the, the the limitation of their visa or because you know employers happy to give them opportunity part time or different you know hours but as long as the the international national students they need to have that sort of mindset means like learning mindset uh, uh, you know creativity innovations if somebody comes here and, and bring some ideas bring some you know I mean uh, the, 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 the learning like you know hunger employers they would love to hire those those students always no matter you know i mean uh, wherever you go but in australia one other important thing i would like to uh, suggest many international students as well is um, we need to uh, international students they need to make sure they, they they interact you know integrate with australian culture because many international students when they come to australia initially they they feel comfortable staying with their own culture and own people and and close group you know but which is group good initially you know it's good because you you are in uh, the the safe area so you you learn everything quicker but later gradually international students they need to uh, they need to mingle with different other people, different cultural mindset, local Australians as well, because local Australians, they are very friendly, they are very approachable, and they, 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 they are, you know, I mean, the easygoing people, you know. So international students, they need to uh, uh, develop the, this mindset to integrating with people, cultures. Sometimes I've seen so many great examples you never know like you're next to your wherever you live you're close to your house they could be the someone uh, your neighbor he could be a director of a I mean, big company big it company you know so try to see what are the activities events happening you know i mean social activities participate in those activities be part be you know i mean say hello say hello if you have something if you cook ask your neighbor they want to try something you know your food you know people love food people love culture you know so so what i would like to tell is uh, don't just think like you just only looking for a job from this email and uh, the using a particular website and then just uh, the, the the one way you know think about so many different ways think about different strategies think about different plan you know and try everything fail as much as you can and do different activities, do different, participate different uh, extracurricular activities. Like let's say, give you an example. So I I am the, the president in Toastmaster Hirschfield. There are many Toastmaster International Club teach uh, people like how to speak in public, right? These are the great platform as well for international students to participate. They can learn how to speak, uh, uh, English definitely English is not my first language as well. I so definitely many international students they learn how to speak English, how to uh, you know confidently uh, communicate with other culture as well. You know, so these are the thing we need to understand. It's not like one specific answer here, but it's all, all about like a mindset. We need to uh, adaptability mindset. That is a very important thing international students need to know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dinka, for all your kind words about me and also the valuable information that you gave to all international students. Um, before we jump into the next round of questions to all my speakers, I'm going to pop into a few of Q&A questions that we received from audience so we can answer a few of those. Um, I'm going to pick one that's, um, I'm, there's a question called, I'm going for an IT related course in an employer's perspective. What additional skills do they expect from students when they sit for an interview apart from their GPS course? It can be internship or extracurricular activity, etc. And in terms of leadership skills, what tools can we utilize from our university to showcase them on our portfolios? 
I think I would like to direct this question to Brendan because it's more or less like an university perspective and I wanted to know from how university function on these things um, to make, you know, prepare students, yeah. yeah. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Tommy, and thank you to uh, our uh, person who asked the question, uh, Manadeep there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question and uh, I think it reflects on some of what we've been saying already that uh, it, it's about painting that big picture of yourself to a prospective employer. So an IT job you might think is very tech related. They want to see that you've got the skills in that industry. But when you think about IT and IT roles, many of them are engaging with other people. Uh, so you need to have a bit of teamwork, uh, a bit of uh, self-management, uh, and any way that you can show that you have those skills and experience as well is really useful in your interview uh, because you might be going for the tech specific role but you might also be then working on the help desk where you've got someone who doesn't know a thing about computers calling you up and and saying how can i turn my computer on so if you say well you know i, I in addition to my fantastic grades in a Bachelor of Information and Technology from the University of Queensland, I have been in a sporting team and uh, I was the captain of that team and that taught me teamwork and I volunteered at a local soup kitchen uh, and worked with helping people. You know, these are just examples um, I'm pulling out of the air, uh, but, but they're things that then paint that picture of your overall kind of uh, personality I guess and often what we're looking for as employers and I've sat on the the employer side of uh, many interviews now uh, over time is someone who fits well in our team uh, so you know you, you get to the interview stage and pretty much everyone's already met the the academic criteria uh, when you interview them so you're really then looking for someone who is good in the team will be a good fit in the team um, is personable and interesting so you know you don't have to focus on those uh, minutiae of your details all the time you can tell us something interesting about yourself as well yeah thank you Brendan that's a really wonderful answer um, let's pick one more question from the audience um, okay how international student build network I feel we free I I think we feel it is the main barrier. Um, well, I think of building network differs from people to people because some might be introvert building network in social medias and mobiles and stuff. Some might be extrovert, they go to some networking event and professional events and build their network by talking to each other um, within the university clubs and societies are something that I would encourage you all to um, mingle with and see and get in yourself into some diverse communities. Um, I think I believe that most of the universities have these clubs and societies and they have a lot of, um, due to COVID, they do have a lot of uh, virtual activities going on. That's the best platform as well. And uh, um, I would also like to encourage you to uh, mingle with um, professors directly, get, get direct connection with them. Um, you know, like, like take them as your mentor, um, put out your difficulty to them and they will be obviously, um, you know, answering all your queries, consoling you if you have any doubts. Initially, yes, it's a rough and a tough phase for every international student to adapt themselves into an Australian um, working culture and also the study culture and stuff. But we will all, uh, we have to have a practice of you know, getting uh, mingling with all what makes you comfortable and we will all be in the track. Um, so that's something I can answer. Um, okay, I'm jumping on to the second round of questions to all my speakers, um, keeping time restrictions in mind. Um, so what I would, um, I, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Lee, uh, how do international um, students can seek a meaningful employ employment of opportunities and also what are the things that they can develop once after or constantly they should develop um, once after they land into their dream job as well so what's your advice on that thanks Tommy <clears throat> um, I'll start with applying a question on how to land your dream job 
because I think it's it's many of the same behaviors that help you help you thrive in it and, and you keep it thriving it and, and build the kind of career that you want um, I'll touch on a few points I mean f first of all don't rely on your degree um, Dinka mentioned learning mindset um, and not being passive and I really like that um, um, by what what we mean by that is is not looking at it as just not study um, and it comes into the previous question from the audience as well um, it's about building networks it's about participating in experiences that suit you and your personality whether you're an introvert or an extrovert I think I was an introvert when I was 20 and I'm, I've learned how to become an extrovert when as required um, and, so, and that's a skill that can be learned as well so don't pigeonhole yourself um, you know, you're really looking to build a holistic experiential learning mindset at this phase in your life You want to go um, you want to be looking at your study. Yes, um, but you want to be looking in and around your study at um, the social and vocational um, uh, 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 Things that are going to stretch you um, they're going to demonstrate and build the types of skills um, professional connections peer networks that you want to build towards um, your you know your future and that's really important um, so don't be passive, don't rely on the degree. The degree is necessary, it's not sufficient anymore. Um, and you know, do what, do that with, with hustle, do it with a can-do attitude. Um, show initiative, as I was talking about in the first answer, and really stretch yourself. Um, I'll talk about one of the ladies we just hired this week, uh, Lynn Go. Um, again, she'd probably be known to some of the audience. Um, she was from La Trobe, she's a student union rep. Um, she's a Study Melbourne student ambassador. She's a podcaster. She was the Study Melbourne Life Project's team leader. Um, and you know, it was it was these kind of stretch activities which really got you know us to notice her. Um, it's how she met some people that used to work with us um, and and do work with us now. Um, and you know that led to an initial contract. It's like let's let's work with you on um, developing our industry relationships. And she approached that with such hustle and such verve. Um, and so that's that's the, the the thing you know when once you're in the work. Um, really um, understanding what the essentials of the job are and making sure you're really focused on those essentials, um, doing a great job um, and, and then stretching yourself beyond that. Um, so that, that, that's really, really important um, as well. Um, a great example of someone who's really stretched herself within um, the, uh, uh, her work and her early, the early stage of her career, I think you might have heard from her earlier today, is Hope Delino, um, who's now a manager um, in our Melbourne office. Um, and Hope, I first met as an international student graduate, um, and she, you know, really um, was very self-effacing. I think she won't mind me telling you that she said sorry nine times in our interview. Um, you know, and now she's here presenting to you guys today um, and presents regularly to hundreds of students um, at launching programs um, and, and working with executives in universities. Um, and she's someone who's really developed her self-confidence, um, her ability to express herself, um, her ability to do the core part of her job and manage, but really stretched into this space as well. Um, and has actually developed a lot of skills in social media and digital literacy that are really, really useful to the company. So she's understood her, her core job, really hustled, really worked hard at that, but then developed a, an area to stretch herself um, as well. And the final thing I'd just say is really know, I'm sorry to bring a little bit of philosophy into it. I'll go to Socrates, two and a half thousand years old. Uh, know thyself, know yourself, really understand who you are, what your skills are and what makes you happy at work. I think a career is a marathon, not a sprint. And you want to be in roles, you want to be in careers that you won't not you know, that, that that you'll be good at, but you'll also really enjoy. You want to go to work every day and think, I really want to do what um, I'm going to work to do, and you'll be better at it. You'll, you'll be better better at that for it. So perhaps just because you think you'll please others by going down a certain path, you know, do do look at that, do critically evaluate that, be authentic in those aspirations, and be authentic to yourself in what you try to do and the kind of things you try to become good at and the experiences you seek out. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lee. It was, it was really, really an impressive and motivating um, example that students should take in consideration in developing um, their skills. Um, so the next question I would like to direct to Brendan. Um, there are many different industries and in, in, I mean many fields of study. How do we approach in finding the best suitable one for us? So I feel like so many students like. Um, come to Australia or I need to study engineering and stuff when they are in the midway of their journey they feel like oh engineering is becoming tough and you know how do you um, how universities give advices on those aspects you know, of um, things yeah 
Great question, Domi. Uh, engineering is tough. Stick with it if you can. Uh, but if you think that it's not for you, there's nothing wrong with with uh, changing to something that you, you find might suit you more as well. Um, all I can say is take advantage of the opportunities that are available to you at the time while you're a student as well uh, in terms of both you know, from day one, you can start at the beginning, go to workshops of how to structure a resume, how to uh, approach an interview, uh, all the way through to getting some work experience and an internship. So you can experience the very beginning through to the, the full kind of uh, what it's like to actually be working. And, and uh, universities can offer those things for you, but sometimes as students as well, you can take some proactive steps to really kind of uh, engage with those experiences yourself. And uh, some simple ones are just to go and speak to a practicing engineer, to use the engineering example, uh, and say, look, I'm, I'm studying chemical engineering. I can see that you're working in the industry. Uh, can I come and meet with you and just see how it goes? Uh, sometimes, uh, universities or schools or, or uh, education institutes will even bring in professionals for a day so that you can hear from uh, a select group of them uh, and really you can then ask them those those personal questions that that you can't get from the textbook per se so uh, make use of those opportunities to to engage with people and also uh, experiment and experience and and one thing i'll say is as a, as a fresh graduate and i was one once um, it, it, it's often, uh, you might have a, an idea in your head of what you want to do and where you want to go, but sometimes you need to take a step to get there and it could be a sideways step. So you may not start in that dream job that you have up here, but you'll start in uh, a sideways job that gives you some relevant experience and the relevant experience could even just be working in teams, going into work. Um, every day and, and you know things like that so that you can incrementally uh, step up your your next job and move towards uh, your goal where you want to be. Thank you Brendan that was really good advice. Um, so I would like to ask the Ben Hurd, um, what's the best um, platform that international students can seek for a meaningful opportunities, like how all they can seek for an opportunity, what are the best platforms that you would advise them, um, especially for the international students to find jobs and um, maybe about student job Australia, how you guys function on the graduate, um, international student graduates and what are the opportunities that they have to seek and where and how, so yeah. Okay, excellent question, first of all, thanks Domi. Uh, in order to, first of all, I want to tell you uh, one uh, background here because many international students, uh, they think, uh, you know, they apply for job, they look for job one week, two weeks time and then they, they give up or they easily get distracted as well, you know. And we need to understand one important thing here is looking for a job is also full time job. Looking, it requires a lot of time. You need to uh, craft your application uh, based on the job requirements criteria, right? And sometimes you need to be active on your your phone has to be, you know, you need to uh, like like I somebody used to tell me when I was applying for job, when I was um, when I finished my study and looking for job, and uh, I used to tell you know the the my friend looking for job was full time job. You have to stay nine to five looking for uh, you know keep. Uh, I mean, checking your emails, following your recruiters, looking for interest, uh, the industry, you know. So, uh, and you need to plan for that as well. You need to plan where you're going. If you are, if you are looking for IT job, then what's your, what's your goal? What's your dream job? Like if you are asking about dream job, you need to have a mental picture. Like, you know, mentally you, you need to think, you know, where, what is your dream job? You want to be like a, uh, you know, chief information officer or you want to be, system administrator, what is your exactly in five years time where you want to see yourself. You can picture yourself as a mind, uh, as a mental image and, and have a smart goal, which is a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic time frame, smart goal. So based on that one, have a, have a vision and have a real time, like, you know, smart goal. And you need to track your performance as well. So then when you have decided what you're going to do, 
what your strength, what your weaknesses are. Like, you know, we can also do short analysis. See that what your weaknesses, what your uh, our strength are. That's the strength and what are the opportunities available right now? Opportunities available in IT, maybe opportunities available in healthcare industry, you know? So that are the those are the opportunities and your weaknesses, uh, you can definitely, you can easily improve those weaknesses, do different courses, participate with different, uh, you know, I mean, professional, get their advice, career advisors. There are so many professional experts there. They can give you some ideas as well. So after having your niece, okay, I want to apply for this job. Give you an example. Okay, I want to apply for, I want to apply for uh, ICT security analyst, right? That's, that's what I'm looking for, for example, right? Then I have an idea. I have designed my, my goal. Uh, I have already have a plan as well. And every week I have dedicated five to six hours, 10 hours time to look for job. And, and you can use, this is our platform is just a tool, our platform like Student Job Australia. This is an initiation we try because we found many international students were distracted. They're looking for a job in stick. They're looking for job everywhere. And later what happened was they were competing with the whole world and very professional people and, and it was difficult for them. So that's why our platform exists to help those international students so they can find themselves, you know, so this is what I can look for and uh, without distracting. That's what the, that's what our platform does. But I'm not emphasizing here only my, our platform. You can use multiple different platforms. Don't only rely on seek.com. Don't only rely on students of Australia. Have a LinkedIn is also a great platform as well. Use different platform, use different approach. As long as you following your track, that's the important thing. Like, you know, I mean, the, you, I'm, I'm going to go to Town Hall or, or uh, Central Winier. As long as I can use different vehicles, I can use taxi, I can use train, I can use car, I can use so many different vehicles. As long as I'm clear where I'm going, my destination, I'm sure I'm going to go there. Then other things are it just, a, it just, a, it just a way to, you know, take you there. So that's a very important thing international students need to realize. So apart from, if I be very specific with a platform, what I think is try different things, but I give more priority on the social connection because they're six times higher than the normal job searches, uh, you know, job hunting tools. So if you know someone, if Domi, like let's say, for example, if you tell me you have a friend, she's a really great at uh, doing like, you know, the administration work, I can give her a priority compared to other 2000 people, uh, you know, from coming from the internet email, you know, because I don't know these people and I know you and I trust you, right? See how this is six, seven, 10 times, you know, faster than the, the other normal approach as well. So we need to understand that as well. So try to surround yourself with the people, profession, where you're going, where you're heading. If I'm looking for IT job, I need to surround with myself, with IT recruiters, IT friends, IT circle, IT forum, IT connections, seminars, workshop, everything, you know, those contents has to be my, my feeding, my day-to-day -day contents, you know, that's what I, I, I think. So uh, thanks yeah. for the question. Yeah, thank you, Dan, for, for that advice. Um, so I'm going to jump into the Q&A questions again from our audience. Um, so I think um, I'm going to direct this question to Bill Lee. Um, from an HR perspective, is it recommended to connect the HR responsible after applying for a job? If so, what's the recommended, recommended time to reach that person? Um, I think as you are from a corporate background, I would, I would recommend you to answer from your perspective so yeah thanks domi thanks jamie i think you asked that question um and it connects to a number of other questions so i'll, I'll try and answer that question and a, a couple of others i've seen on the chat as well yeah, yeah. um for, first and foremost um uh, dinka will undoubtedly have this stat better than i do but um you know more than more than half the jobs are never advertised on any platform it's it there's an informal job market out there we have never hired an international student who we did not know already and did not trust already through some other other way of connecting with them. Um, now we're a, we're a smaller company without a formal HR department. Um, the last two companies I worked for, CSRO and Deloitte, have massive HR departments. Once you're talking to HR, you're part of a process, um, and that process is designed to screen out a lot of people, including people with complicating factors like 
um, no, no right to work in Australia. So unless you have somebody else in that company who you've worked with uh, in a position of some authority um, who you've worked with, who you've shown what you can do, who you've done something for, um, you stand a much lower chance of getting through the HR process just with an application, just with a CV. They don't know you, they don't, they don't know who you are yet. Um, and they have a thousand applications and they, they might have three or four or five places on the graduate program. Um, so I think there's no right answer to the, um, how often to contact HR, pretty often, um, because chances are um, you uh, will at least get some attention. You might get them to take a second look. Um, HR managers do not spend very long looking at the first set of applications they, 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 they go through and they're essentially eliminating them or even worse, a computer system is eliminating them on their behalf based on some preset rules, including do you have a right to work in Australia? So the best way to get through um, the recruitment process is to engage in those types of um, programs that you find at university that will put you into direct contact with employers. Um, that build your employer network. These are things like internships, projects, innovation accelerators, networking functions, um, to, to go out and, and try and connect with employers, um, you know, before graduation um, on, on your own merits to do part-time work in fields that are, are adjacent to those you can. So um, that, that's the more holistic answer to that question. Um, with the HR one, um, give them an email every week, call them through any means necessary. Yeah. Thank you, Lee, Mr. Lees. Um, so due to time restrictions, I have to wrap up um, this session. So I'm just going to um, give an open um, suggestions. I just want to all my speakers to give um, advice or the suggestions to students to land in them. How do they want to land in their career in the future? So I'll start off with Brendan. So your advice and suggestions for students um, towards their career. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, I've, I've got three points that I'll just quickly make. Uh, one is to make use of the services that are available to you uh, right now in the institution that you're studying in, whether that's a school, uh, a, a TAFE college, a private education institution or, or a university. Uh, there's plenty of services out there and like I said, they can start you from day one all the way through to your graduation and there's many things that you can get involved in. Um, we've all spoken about the importance of networking. It's also important to know what networking is and how to do it. Uh, it doesn't mean just uh, going up, for example, to Dinkar and saying, hi, Dinkar, I've just graduated with marketing. Can you please give me a job? and expecting a job. That's not really networking, uh, or maybe, but no, it's not, unfortunately. And networking is often something about just getting a connection with someone. So you might say, hi, Dinkar, I've just graduated in marketing and I really like what your company's doing. Uh, and I'm following you on LinkedIn now. And, um, you know, this is a little bit about myself. And then having a personal conversation. And maybe Dinkar will pick something up and maybe a week later, a month later, a year later, he'll think, oh yeah, I remember that person. And now we've got this job, I'll see how they're doing they said they were following me. Um, so that's kind of, you know, networking is more than, than just expecting a, a job like that. And I think that's important. And finally, just remember as international students, even when you're working part time, you have the same rights as every other worker in Australia. Uh, and make sure that you're aware of what those rights are. And if you feel like your rights are being violated in any way, the Fair Work Ombudsman is there to support you. So you can make use of that as well. Okay. Thank you, Brendan, for your advice and suggestions to all international students and the participants here. Um, so next, I would um, like to ask um, Dinkar to share his advice and suggestions for students to land in their best um, career. Yeah. Thank you again, Domi, uh, for the great questions you have prepared, actually. Uh, First of all, you know, I always, I've been telling uh, many international students what is they have, um, they have a strength, you know, what I can see as an international student. Their strengths are they can speak different languages, multiple different, different languages. They're flexible, they're reliable, and also they have a strong adaptability. You know, international students, they coming, uh, they came from the far from their country and living without their parents. They need to be disciplined, right? You need to be very organized. You need to have a work, you have so many. So these are the things international students alert have that skills you know this is a very valuable skills so they are strongly adaptable in different situations so but still in terms of employability 
in terms of job aspect. I would like to highly suggest international student. Yes, you're doing your 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 qualification, your 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 degree. That's great, but make sure in terms of in line with industry requirements because industry uh, updates, you know, regular their requirements and the education uh, the academic. Uh, they are, they are not like communicating like straightforward. You know, it's a bit slow because I teach in different colleges as well. So that's why you need to look for the, what are the, the, the latest certifications available in order for you to fulfill the skills deficiency if you have a skills gap, you know, that's very important. You may have graduated in IT, but you don't know the latest, uh, the software of updates in, in Java, you know, or maybe Oracle. So, so you need to think about doing certification, latest certification, Cisco, Microsoft. I'm just giving an example in IT, but there are many certification in different occupations and different industry could be project management pmp so this is the one important thing and 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 i was telling uh, the main important uh, another important thing is this is all the whole journey is a mindset it's not the single one line answer i can give you it's a mindset means day to day life you need to adapt that mindset day to day life like how we we do certain things day to day life this has to be integrated in your day to day life talking to people day to day life having saying hello to neighbor mixing with the local community integrating with the local people and 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 be open you know my i mean openness what i'm saying is if somebody asks me do you want to try thai food yes let's go to thai restaurant you know whether i like it maybe i don't like it but i have an open mindset you know i cannot say oh i don't want to thai food i just always like to eat you know the food i'm eating so i'm used to with that i don't go you need to be like approachable, you know, okay, if you try that, you never know, you like Thai food or you like Malaysian, there are, this is an example. So approachable, you know, try to, if you get rejected employee in interview or your job application get rejected, ask them, can you please give me a feedback, you know, so I can learn from that mistakes or I can improve my weakness. So these are the things are mindset and has to be adapt, adapted in, in your day-to-day -day life. That's what I, I last year will say. Thank you, Denver. Um, so next to Billy, so what's your advice and suggestions for students to land their career here? Thanks. Um, first of all, um, be authentic and true to yourself. Know what type of work you want to do. Know what impact you ideally want to have in the world. If that's being a lawyer or a doctor, that's great. Um, if that's uh, running an NGO to deliver water to third world countries, you know, that's fine too. But not, know what type of work you want to do and what makes you happy. And that, that's both the impact you want to have in the world and the type of work that you want to do day to day, week to week. And look for opportunities um, to do that. Um, second, that's a, that's a great goal, but be flexible and adaptable in its pursuit. Um, we are living in a very disrupted world right now. It was disrupted before COVID, um, but it, uh, um, you know, COVID has really um, become a game changer. Um, tech, different sorts of technologies um, are disrupting traditional ways of work. Be open to different pathways. There are a number of questions in the thread um, about, you know, maybe taking a, a, a kind of job you had, didn't have in mind in the first place to get a foot in the door in the other. And I would absolutely um, advise to be open to those opportunities. Um, have a very experiential learning mindset to this. Um, I, I have a specific plan in mind. Um, see if that plan works, reflect if it doesn't, get feedback, um, learn from that feedback and set a, a more realistic and attainable plan or, or a different, different style of plan. So be very flexible and adaptable. The career is a long time um, and it will come and go in fits and starts. It does, your, your first job is not determinative of the rest of your career. Um, and finally, hustle and be persistent. Um, as a student, find out what opportunities your university has to connect to with real employers. Ask them for more. Um, really uh, look at every different channel you can um, to get in front of different employers, whether it's in the industry or the uh, particular specialization that you want or not, doesn't matter. Do things like Toastmasters, uh, volunteering, uh, part-time part -time jobs in different sorts of industries, not just retail, etc. and look at that with a career mindset. Extract and understand the skills that you're developing from those and be persistent. Um, and I'll, I'll do a fourth, which is just finally, don't take it personally, um, as, as Dinka mentioned, you know, you, you get told no a lot um, in any sort of um, endeavor, including job, job searching and, and job hunting. Um, it's not about you personally, it's about learning from that opportunity and finding the right pathway for yourself. Thank you again for 
me about it. Thank you so I much, Lily, um, Liz. Um, I'm really, really sorry because of that time constraint. I had to skip a lot of questions from the audience, but I promise that we will all answer our post session. Um, we will make a note of all these questions and end of the sessions, we'll make sure that we will answer you. Um, so yeah, it was really a nice and in insightful session. I hope you all enjoyed this session. Stay connected with us. You can connect us via LinkedIn or any social platform that you guys wanted to. You can um, watch us and get details in our conference page as well and stay connected. We are all in this together. We will all guide you and take you to the right path in your career. Stay connected and thank you once again for participating in this session along with us. And thank you so much for all the speakers here who gave a valuable insights to students. And thank you. Thank you very much, Domi, Brendan, Liu, Brew. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Domi. Thanks. Have a great yourself. day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.